Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lior. I'm a developer in the Moodle team in the University of Israel, Open University of Israel. And I'm here to talk about um, our new forum, uh, but more on the, less on the forum, more of the approach. Uh, I'm going to talk, talk about some of the, I'm going to point out some of the, of the development issues I've developed during uh, the work. So let's start with some details. In the current year, we have over 80, 890 courses which, with over 7,600 forums, and as of, as of now, over 84,000 posts with around 49,000 students and 1,200 faculty members. As you can see, our forum is, our, is very used. It's actually our second most uh, used component in, in, in the site. And it started as some modification we added to the original forum way back in Moodle 1.9, and it just took a life of its own over the years. And we just uh, had to answer so all the issues that were raised by the users and the staff. So here's our previous version of the forum that we built for a Moodle 2.9 that we had. It shows some of our uh, features, as you can see, very, very compact display and collapsible content, and some action are dynamic. By the way, when I say dynamic here, I also mean interface and uh, adjects uh, working with the server. But the general appearance is closely similar to the original forum. You have all the, um, pretty similar, more or less. So on our migration to Moodle 3, we used the opportunity and gathered all of the feedbacks and conclusion we collected throughout the years to create a new interface. Our two main goals were supporting Moodle devices and a greater awareness to users with disabilities, which can be considered as another type of platform to support. And it's actually the most important one and I'll uh, most of my uh, like, uh, focus will be on, uh, access on the accessibility issue. In short, we wanted the form to be available everywhere. Each of these two goals is a large error by itself. To find proper solution, we had to try new ideas. This includes working with a UX designer and learning how to develop for a screen reader. While it's relatively easy to uh, add keyboard accessibility to existing sites, uh, screen reader accessibility is a much, much larger investment. The dynamic also received a very large meaning for accessibility. And here was my first lesson. In order to develop for a screen reader, you have to work with a screen reader. There's no way around it when developing. After all, a screen reader walks through the pages data tree, and you have an example for a, a web page and a source code behind. And here's what happens when the user wants to post something uh, on the forum. This is what actually happens. Every page load, it's a very, very slow process. While in a dynamic page, the user remains at the same place after the action and can continue to navigate in the page. For a user with screen reader, it's a much, it's a bigger improvement. So here's a sneak peek of the new forum. I'll talk later about what's in it, but before that, supporting our two goals required finding solutions that weren't techn technological. Our two most prominent are no more than two hierarchies in discussion replies. In long discussion, some of the times you're trying to understand to who exactly you want to reply to, or who did another user responded to. And in a small screen like mobile, it's even harder. So here we have only two levels with visual distinction that enable a much faster orientation. Another much more significant change is the text editor, the Atto. 
loading and displaying actually inside the forum page every time you want to write something isn't a very fast and simple process. And that's just when Atto is the default editor. Some other site will use another one. So we found the simplest solution. Don't use a text editor. At least not in the um, quick mode, at least. We found, uh, we found that in, in average discussion in our forums, most users write a simple text without special formats. Therefore, the default is a simple text. While well, pressing the advanced edit button, we load the standard editing form with the default text editor for your site. Let, now let's be more technical. A responsive des design for mobile uh, means bye-bye table display. Everything has to fit in the display as much as possible. This means every page should be compatible for at least three resolutions. And here we have uh, the index page for a forum in our forum. And actually, here you, can, you have almost the exact amount of information you have here, just organized differently with buttons and also collapsible content. Now, fitting a page for a screen reader requires a selecting a structure that will help the user navigate faster and easier. Building in this structure, for example, will look visually the same, but for a screen reader, there is a difference that helps in navigating in the page and also jump to other sections in it, in it very fast. It also requi required thinking some of the, rethinking some of the method that were a pretty standard approach for me at least. For instance, using links for focus anchors and user actions instead of making an element to appear uh, like another element, sometimes, not always, sometimes just simpler to use the other element. In this example, actually, uh, some of the screen reader will say uh, heading level three link, or if you ever click on it, it will say heading level three visited link, but it's not a link at all. Here, it will just say heading level three. Now, let's stay in the interface. A dynamic interface requires not only design, but also a fair amount of front-end coding. And this code also has to know how to talk to screen reader as well. For instance, this is the recommendation button that enables the instructor to recommend a certain post to the students. Now, how can the screen reader know if the action happened, and more importantly, if, what if it failed? So I found a solution, don't know if it's the best one. It works for me. The button has an ARIA label for the screen reader. And now I will demonstrate what happens uh, if the action failed. You get a visual uh, uh, view and I'll do it again. And the screen reader read action failed in about after two seconds, it resets. Now, also, a responsive forum page raised the need to build new components. Between them, a new type of button that can change its behavior according to screen size. Here's our subscription button for the forum. On a desktop display, the button acts as usual, but on a compact display, it turns into a menu to do the same thing. And this is the same button. Uh, the method of hiding an element and replacing it with another one uh, for any means may be easier, but it does have the potential to make a user with screen reader or just one with keyboard uh, lose its place because the former clicked element has disappeared and you can potentially lose your focus and start back from the beginning. So maybe I'll just show you um, uh, the forum itself. Here we have a forum page with two discussions. Uh, it's collapsible as default. This one, this one is open. A uh, user with capabilities can 
uh, pin a discussion, lock it for replies, uh, recommend it for other users, or mark it for personal use. Um, we uh, added three uh, types of fla uh, flags, so and all users can make their own personal categories. The rest of the action are in the menu, and some of it is also dynamic as well. You can delete. The permalink has its own dialog, and even send by email is um, also dynamic. You can actually send to several users uh, the same post or discussion in a matter of seconds. You don't leave the page. Uh, let's hope this works. Here's a visual, is a screen grab of some of the action I talked about. I'm starting a new discussion, and there it is. Now let's add a reply. Change the default uh, uh, heading. Notice uh, the reply amount has changed. Now add another reply to the discussion. Let's uh, uh, flag it for personal use and the red flag, and also recommend it for students. Let's flag it for another color. And here's the send to send by email just to show you the dialogue. Notice this also has advanced edit to the usual uh, send uh, to user forward page. The link to post, you can just copy the link for later use. And let's delete the whole discussion. And we never left the page. Now, another feature, uh, it, the form uh, recognized uh, formulas and photos and can show it in a responsive gallery. Very good for small screens. That's the live display. And I want to talk about dynamic a bit. For every action, there is an equal and opposite feedback. In a dynamic page, there should be a proper response for every possible activity that you can think of. For, insta for instance, uh, there's discussion. The user is trying to, is writing a very large uh, reply, and at the same time, a teacher in, in his own computer has locked the um, discussion from a reply. What happens when he used a click send? What do, we, what do we do? We need to give a proper uh, feedback. Uh, so the user also won't lose all of the content he wrote for the last five minutes. So for every action, it should be at least feedback for successful actions, a failed action, and some error handling procedures like the one I demonstrate, uh, talked about. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bunch of uh, annoyed users. So the result supports many resolutions uh, in a responsive design. We, we, we cannot use the mobile app, for, unfortunately, because we have too many third-party plugins that we wrote. So this was our um, best solution. Uh, it supports uh, all major browsers and also with um, compatibility to older version, which means don't use the latest feature. If you see some new CSS feature and a new HTML5 feature, you, get, you have to check if it supports all the mobile, active mobile browsers, and for example, many people still use Internet Explorer 11, and we have to support that, so we cannot use some of the cool features and use uh, 
and support them. Also, uh, it's it hopefully completely um, has, uh, fit the accessibility standard of uh, AA. Uh, as I said, screen reader, keyboard, uh, contrast, and uh, the rest, all that. Uh, wow, that was fat. That's what. It, that's it. Questions? Uh, you said something about uh, the not losing the responses written. Uh, I think the auto editor, the auto editor, has got an auto save. Is this also working on the, this kind of the simplified editor? As of now, no. But it's a good point. We should we should do auto save to the text uh, area. Yeah. Sorry, Juan. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so my question was: um, Are you thinking of, of looking at uh, enabling your plugins for the for the mobile app with the with the new way that you can en enhance the, the add-on? Enabling for the mobile app. Um, I don't think so because we never develop anything for the mobile app, and I don't think we we will because of the. We need, we'll need to adapt everything to it. So, no. Hi there. Uh, I did some work on the, the Middle Rooms Advanced Forum, which I think faced some of the, the same problems and came up with some similar solutions. I think there's some other people have done kind of the same thing, and I think it's a, a good, good sign when multiple people independently come up with kind of similar solutions. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can, can you speak louder a bit? Uh, okay. Um, so I had worked on the, the Middle Rooms Forum, yeah, which forum. Uh, uh, addressed many of the, the same issues. Um, and something I didn't get to do with that was to return some of those things to the core forum. And I was wondering which elements from your work you felt were most able to be put back into the core forum so that uh, everybody could benefit from them. Probably not all of it, because it's you know fairly radical changes, but is there any bits, small bits, that could make a big difference? To the, uh, core, to the core, uh, uh, there's, there are no core changes here. Um, it's actually, um, it was built as a, to work on any Moodle uh, out of the box. Actually, uh, it was built for our version 3.1, and I've uh, tried. I've adapted it to 3.4, and that's where uh, that, uh, there is the screenshot that came from uh, my 3.4 on a booth theme. Actually. Uh, it's not on the GitHub. Oh, it's not on the Moodle plugin. Still on beta uh, phase, but it's on GitHub. And if everyone wants it, I'm more than happy to give you the code to just use it on on your own uh, sites to play with it, do whatever you want with it. No core change it changes. Uh, it works and it relies only on what Moodle has to offer. Nothing else. <coughs> Forum. Why are we all sitting separately developing our own forums? Why can't we make these improvements in the Moodle core forum so everyone just gets them? That was kind of the previous question. And yeah, we just should do it. Dev Jam topic. Well, we should, I think. Yeah, uh, but. Um, 
Um, we just have too many modifications uh, of our own, and we don't want to impose them on, on Moodle because we have our own demands, and there, there will be conflicts if you want to, if you'll, if you'll um, do some changes to the, suggest some changes to the form, they won't actually go hand in hand with the current behavior uh, the rest of the users in the whole in the world uh, are used to. So if anyone wants to um, take some of the ideas and implement them uh, in their own uh, forums or even uh, some, if one of some of this uh, uh, some of it will come will be used in the core uh, forum. Uh, that's not up for me to decide, actually. So it's up to the Moodle HQ to decide if they want it. I don't want to impose anything on any suggestion on it. Does this answer your questions? No. Well, I think this will be a good topic for. Yeah. Yeah, but which features? Uh, <laughs> A good topic for tomorrow, the Dev Jam. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you were looking at uh, accessibility requirements, was one of the considerations for colorblind users. Yes. I'm just thinking, because you had the, the flag icons, which were the same icons with three different colors, did you have to pick those colors particularly to make sure they contrast? It is, it, it is, yes. Cool. All the color plate is uh, for, um, if you didn't miss one, you might have, uh, it's for the colorblind. Cool, thanks. Um, I have a last question. Have you noticed any improvements in uh, Android or iOS screen readers? Because I th if I remember well, in earlier versions, they weren't very good. They weren't able to read properly this what the, the, the browser information. Have you tested? Have you noticed improvements in in the screen readers that come can, that comes with Android and iOS? Have Have I noticed? The improvements in that, no in the screen readers that uh, you know the accessibility tools that comes with Android and and iOS you can activate access, access, oh. accessibility tools there and they read what you see uh, the browser information using these area levels so my question was if you have noticed any improvement or if you are aware of that because I tested it in Android 4 and in iOS 8 a lot of time ago, and they weren't very good reading the browser information. Even even if the page was designed taking accessibility into account. Accessibility in Chrome. Um, well, the whole area of accessibility, we have, uh, not sure I could answer your question, um, there are several uh, um, screen reader engines. One of them is the, uh, there was one in Chrome, um, and the Android and, the, and Apple has their own uh, built-in. Um, I, I haven't checked with all of them. It's, um, yeah, but maybe we can discuss later because it's just that uh, I, I feel that uh, they don't work as, as expected in mobile devices or tablets. I think they, these kind of tools work better in, in, in a computer, in a laptop, in a real browser, but not in devices, small devices. That's my personal feeling, but it's something that I don't have proof to, yeah. you know, to discuss that. So, Thank you very much.